threat of more far-right demonstrations. The government warns we are watching you. Violent scenes in the wake of the Southport stabbings have spread around the country. More are planned for this weekend. I don't feel safe at the minute with everything that's going on. And all the threats of riots all the time all over the country. It's, it's scary, isn't it? Also this lunchtime, hugs and tears on the tarmac. Prisoners freed from Russia land back on home soil. All you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there. We're just happy to be here. Harry and Meghan open up about online bullying and their fears for their children. After this match was abandoned yesterday, the IOC responds to the boxing gender row at the Paris Olympics and... The final chapter of lightweight rowing, it ends with gold for Great Britain! Gold, silver and bronze for Team GB at the game. Good afternoon. This week began with one of the worst attacks on children in this country in decades. The deep grief felt by their families and their communities has since been hijacked by violent, ugly, far-right demonstrations that have spread around the country. And it's believed there could be well over a dozen more planned for this weekend. The government's warning that anyone involved in violence will face the full force of the law. Our political correspondent, Libby Vina, reports. The residents of Southport are still mourning the loss of three young girls, but they also have fears for their own safety after this week's riots. I don't feel safe at the minute with everything that's going on. And all the threats of riots all the time all over the country. It's, it's scary. The police are worried too, concerned that the disorder seen here and elsewhere won't be the last. 53 officers were injured in the clashes that stunned a town, already grieving after the deadly attack at a dance class. Today the government had this warning for those planning any further violence. If you undertake any activity that leads to the type of criminal behaviour and conspiracy to riot that took place this week, you will face the full force of the law. And people need to know that, and the police will be looking at intelligence-led policing to determine whether individuals are engaged in this activity, and ultimately, if they are, they will be held to account through the courts and through the justice system. After a week of disturbances, including in Hartlepool, where a police car was set on fire, the police federation says there's no doubt far-right groups are involved. It's very much organised, and we've seen it year on year, where these groups do jump on the back of tragic incidents like we've seen in Southport and use it for their own political agenda. I would just ask the public to go through the normal democratic avenues, which is speak to your police and crime commissioner, or speak to your local MP about your concerns, and allow them to take your voice forward, but don't rely on these organised thugs to carry your message. The police and ministers hope that people will heed their message, that further unrest will not be tolerated, and those planning violence will be prosecuted. So Libby, the authorities are on high alerts. Yes, I think there is concern. Uh, the Prime Minister holding that uh, press conference yesterday after meeting with police chiefs and one of his ministers today, issuing that very direct warning to people not to plan any type of violent protest over the coming days. I think there's also concern about how th these groups are communicating online. And the Prime Minister yesterday did uh, make a reference to the fact that he believed that uh, social media companies should be doing more to stop misinformation spreading on the internet. Well, Elon Musk uh, gave a response to that. Uh, he retweeted uh, one of the uh, images of Keir Starmer giving that press conference and uh, below it, uh, two exclamation marks. So I'm not sure how seriously he himself is taking uh, that uh, suggestion from the Prime Minister that he needs to do more to ensure that misinformation doesn't spread.
Um, Libby, thank you. Well, amid all the noise and the violence, at the centre of this are children, stabbed as they enjoyed a summer holiday dance class in Southport. Landmarks across the northwest will light up in pink in memory of the girls who lost their lives and for the eight other children and adults who were injured. We can go live to Stacey Foster now, who's in Southport. And Stacey, a time for people to reflect, to remember. Absolutely, and since this tragedy hit this community on Monday, there has been a real outpouring of affection, not only for the families involved and at the centre of this tragedy, but also the three young girls who lost their lives to Alice, to BB, and uh, to Elsie Dot as well. And as you can see, these flowers are continuing to grow both here and at the other cordon at the other end of this road. But people are looking after these flowers. There are buckets full of water keeping them hydrated. And when the rain came earlier this week, one woman took all of these cuddly toys home with her, kept them dry, and then brought them back out and displayed them the next day. And people say they continue to come here because they care. We've never witnessed anything like this before. I mean, I know we have in Liverpool, but Southport's a very quiet town, so it's just heartbreaking for everyone. It's really sad because, like, they just had the whole life ahead of them and, like, they were only little. Just very emotional. Um, I'm just heartbroken to see all this. We're also hearing that there are lots of fundraisers happening locally um, for the families involved at the centre of this tragedy. And of course, the council have announced today that they plan to light up the main council building in the centre of Southport that hosted that huge vigil uh, for the families involved earlier this week. We know that the building itself will be lit up in pink for the next three nights, as well as hospitals and other buildings in the northwest as well to remember not only those three girls at the center of this tragedy but also all of the families involved and the local community as well. Stacey in Southport, thank you very much. Moving on to some other news now, there have been tears, hugs and emotional reunions as prisoners who've been held by Russia touched down and finally met their families in the United States. Three American citizens were freed as part of the historic Russian West prisoner swap. They were also greeted by President Biden, who placed securing the release of Americans held wrongfully overseas at the top of his foreign policy agenda. Martha Fairley has more. With a wave and a salute for the president, former Marine Paul Whelan stepped back onto American soil. Held in a Russian prison for more than five years, there was a warm welcome from the president and vice president before an emotional reunion with his sister. You know, it, it didn't feel real until we were flying over England. I'm a British citizen, Irish citizen, Canadian and American. President Biden gave me his pin. That's an American flag. He wore it on his lapel. So we were chatting and he took it off and uh, gave it to him. Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich was next to emerge at the Andrews Air Force Base Sentenced to 16 years in prison by Russia after his detention last year, accused of spying for the CIA, there were cheers and hugs for him from media colleagues. And Alsu Kurmasheva, arrested last October in southwest Russia, couldn't wait a moment longer to be united with her two daughters and husband. President Biden said the deal involving seven nations and 24 people in total had taken months of complex negotiations and sacrifice. And I asked them to do some things that were against their immediate self-interest and uh, really very difficult for them to do, particularly Germany and Slovenia. Slovenia came in at the last minute and, and I tell you what, the uh, chancellor was incredible. It was incredible. Meanwhile in Moscow, a more formal guard of honor as President Putin received Russian nationals, including Vadim Krasikov in the baseball cap, convicted of an assassination in Germany, and Russian spies Artem and Anna Dultsev, who, with their children, have been posing as Argentine citizens living in Slovenia. Russian-British dual national and political activist Vladimir Karamurza was one of 13 other Western detainees flown to Germany last night in what has been the biggest prisoner swap between Moscow and the West since the Cold War. Martha Fairley, ITV News.
The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have shared their concerns for their children's safety online during a rare joint interview to highlight the threat of online bullying. Harry and Meghan say they want to help families who've suffered because of what's said on social media and elsewhere, as Ian Woods reports. As they search for new non-royal roles, good causes to support, as well as commercial ventures to earn a living, the Sussexes have landed on a topic which many parents will identify with. The Duke and Duchess have met families who know what it's like to lose a child to suicide, often after they were being tormented online. Their own children, Archie and Lilibet, are still too young to be accessing the internet, but Harry and Meghan spoke to the American network CBS about the challenges ahead. They're young, they're three and five. I mean, they're amazing. But all you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there, and we're just happy to be able to be a part of Well, you hope for good. when your children ask for help, someone, you know, is, is there to, to give it. Uh, you know, if you not know, to... If you know how to help. If, mm, well, thank you. At, the, at this point, we've got to the stage where almost every parent needs to be a first responder. And even the best first responders in the world wouldn't be able to tell the signs of possible suicide. That is the terrifying piece of this. Harry's most successful project was born out of his experiences as a soldier, founding the Invictus Games for wounded servicemen and women. Now that he's a father, he wants to tackle cyberbullying of kids. When the car was first invented, there wasn't a seatbelt. And what happened? People started to get hurt. People started to die. So you started to change the car. We need to get out of this idea that you know, young kids, there's something wrong with them. It's, no, it's, it's the world that we're allowing to be created around them. And it's also a campaign that he and his wife can work on together. Ian Woods, ITV News. Serial killer Levi Belfield has been denied a civil partnership under new laws stopping the UK's most serious offenders from getting married in jail. Belfield is serving back-to-back -back life sentences for the murders of 13-year-old Millie Dowler, Marsha McDonnell and Amelie Delagrange. The Ministry of Justice says the law aims to deny the most heinous criminals from enjoying the important life events they callously took from their victims. The International Olympic Committee say they're saddened by abuse boxers are receiving over an eligibility row. Algerian boxer Imani Khalif and Chinese Taipei's Lin Yu Ting both failed a gender eligibility test conducted by the International Boxing Association last year, but they can compete at Paris, as Faye Barker reports. Solid, straight right hand. The outcome of this Olympic fight yesterday has fueled a raging dispute. Italy's Angela Carini pulled out of her bout with Algerian Iman Khalif after just 46 seconds, later saying she'd never felt a punch like it and had to stop for her health. Last year, Khalif was disqualified from the Women's World Championships for failing gender eligibility tests, but she passes rules for the Paris Games, where the gender and age of athletes is based on their passports. The International Olympic Committee today defended their rules but acknowledge the difficulties of handling this row. This is a, a minefield, uh, and unfortunately, as with all minefields, we want a simple explanation. Everyone wants a black and white explanation of how we can determine this. That explanation does not exist, neither in the scientific community nor anywhere else. As I said before, if we can find a consensus and we will work towards consensus, we will certainly work to, to apply that. Red. This afternoon, Chinese Taipei's Lin Yu Ting is due to fight in Paris. She too failed the International Boxing Association's gender eligibility test, but the exact criteria for these tests remains unclear, and the IOC has called these bans sudden and arbitrary. No rules will be changed for Paris, but there are serious questions over whether boxing will even be an Olympic sport in 2028. Faye Barker, ITV News. And finally, it's been another successful morning for Team GB. Emily Craig and Imogen Grant won rowing gold with a dominant performance in the women's double skulls. Moments after Oliver Wynne Griffith and Thomas George claimed silver in the men's pair. And there were more medals for Team GB's diver. Antoine Allen has more.
golden moment, three years in the making. Emily Craig and Imogen Grant missed out on the medal in Tokyo by photo finish. It's a really strong start by the British. This time in Paris, each stroke was motivated by their mission to achieve Olympic glory. Crossing the line after dominating the women's lightweight double skulls final. The pair were overcome with joy after winning Team GB's first gold of the day in a morning filled with medals. Earlier, Oliver Wynne Griffith and Tom George sat on the water with only one medal on their mind. The men have been together since becoming schoolmates in Cambridge. Their collective drive resulted in them leading for much of the race. Until Croatia overtook them in the last few strokes. The Brits were depressed on the water, but celebrated an agonising silver back on dry land. Whether flying along the water or twisting above it, Team GB made their way onto the podium. Tom Daly watched the success from the diving board continue, with Anthony Harding and Jack Law making it four medals from four diving events for Great Britain. The GB men spun their way into the bronze medal position in the synchronised three-metre springboard. Oh my goodness! In an event dominated by the Chinese, the British pair pushed their rivals all the way until the final dive. Early morning training sessions in Caversham, fueled by disappointment in Tokyo, combined for joyous gold in tears in Paris. Antoine Allen, ITV News. That's it this lunchtime. There's more on all of the stories on our website and on ITVX. Lucrezia is here with the evening news at 6.30 and the news where you are is next. Bye-bye for now.